All right, let's make some VR in Unity. So first off, we're going to be starting a new project on this episode. Um, I'm going to be launching it from Unity Hub. It's perfectly fine for you to launch it uh, directly through the Unity editor that you have installed on your computer. Just make sure that it is uh, the version we're using on the show or something similar to it. 2019.3.15 uh, F1 is what we're using for this show. Um, most everything I show you will still apply to a lot of earlier versions, uh, certainly in the 2019.3 series, and will probably apply to many versions after. We're going to keep it up to date. So uh, but this is where we're starting at because this is latest and greatest for right now without going beta. So we're going to just start a new project, and we're going to choose Universal Render Pipeline. This is the uh, new rendering system. This is the old legacy one that's going to be eventually uh, deprecated. So uh, this one is what we're going to be using. Uh, for the most part, we're going to be using latest and greatest for everything on this. Um, we're not going to be using the high definition render pipeline because, quite frankly, I do not have the art chops to actually take advantage of it. Um, and uh, But you're welcome to use it on your own projects. And you're also welcome to use the old pipeline. Uh, we're just going to be focused on this one for right now. Uh, we're going to call this project Tutorial 1. Make sure my keyboard works. All right, so I just hit enter and it is initializing our new project. Just please wait a moment. This may take more or less time on your computer depending on the factors. Probably less time. <laughs> All right, here we are, and we're just going to wait for this thing to figure out what it's doing here. The scene will stop being blue in a moment. Here we go. We have our scene, and if we hit play, we will have a 2D image representing the camera view and some construction equipment and stuff. So that means everything's working. But we're going to create our own scene to work from uh, that has all the stuff that we're going to be actually working with. Keep this scene around so that you can check it out later. But for right now, we're just going to go into the file menu and choose new scene. And then we're going to go ahead and save this scene. And we're going to save it into our scenes folder. And we're just going to call it tutorial one. Save. That might change later, but for right now, that'll be a great name for it. So I'm going to do a couple of layout changes just so that uh, it fits my uh, work strategy. You can move these windows however you want. Like if you grab and... Why is that? No, they're not moving when I show the example. You can grab and move them around to different places, dock to them in different places. So you can really set up your stuff however that you want to. Um, I'm just going to show you the layout that I typically use. I start with wide. Um, I use the old project view, which some people probably would prefer this iconographic view. I prefer more of a traditional just explorer view. Uh, you can, of course, change that to your prefer preferences. And uh, what do we got here? So we need to have the... Uh, I like to have the window for the console out there. So in general, console... We will put this over on the right here. And I also use, usually like to put the project setting window. Project settings. Wait, where is it? Oh, that's not project settings. Hmm. Oh, we'll find it later. Uh, it's probably the player settings and it's in, in a different place that we're going to open it. So, what are we doing? All right, so at this point, we have a new scene. We're in our new project, and when we hit play, we'll just see a horizon line. There it is. There's a horizon line. And uh, there we go. So, the first order of business is to actually get VR running. So, we're going to go into the window here, and we're going to go into general actually no we're going to go into the edit project settings there it is there's the window i was looking for for some reason this one doesn't show up in the window view we'll have to keep that in mind I usually throw this about here 
And uh, we're going to go into the player settings on the left here. And then we're going to scroll all the way down to XR settings, pull open that disclosure. And there's this big old warning that says built-in XR is deprecated. And this says deprecated settings, virtual reality supported. We're going to click the checkbox on this. Now, the reason we're not using the new XR plugin system, I actually hit the button, but it's, it's loading, I think, uh, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. Um, anyway, while this is going, we could be using the new XR plug plugin management system. Um, but right now, I've had trouble with getting that to actually properly support Steam VR targets, like open open VR targets rather than um, Oculus VR targets. Uh, so what I what I'm what we're going to do on the show is virtual supported checkbox. That's the only thing that's going to be different. Um, if you if you decide to use XR plugin management, you'll be fine because we're going to be using the new input system, which is which is what they use on the XN plugin side as well. Uh, so there really shouldn't be much difference between the two. Uh, this is just what I'm using because this will provide uh, a way for it to actually work on my headset during the show and also work on a wider variety of headsets uh, for the people out here out there watching. So we just did that. We hit this checkbox. It automatically brought in virtual reality SDKs. The SDKs it brings in may be different depending on what your headset you're wearing is. Um, uh, it also might just be the same no matter what. I haven't actually done much experimenting on that. So, uh, but uh, the the important part is make sure that you have your SDK for your headset. If you're using an Oculus headset, you're going to need an Oculus SDK. If you're using a uh, Windows MR headset or a Vive or or Valve Index, you'll want to use the OpenVR SDK. We'll be focusing on the uh, PC settings right now, but most of these settings apply equally to the Android XR settings as well. Um which is needed for Quest. So we just hit that checkbox. That's all we did. It automatically populated this stuff for us. We hit play. And believe it or not, if all goes well, see, I'm in my headset and I see I can look around. So this is me just looking around with my neck. I'm just looking around and I can actually move positionally, but there's no way you could actually be able to tell that in this because there's nothing to compare positionally to. So let's go ahead and switch back over sorry i'm i'm in vr land right now so i need to get out of it there we go so so that that was amazingly easy right but we're going to actually show how to set it up explicitly now uh so what happens is if you if you checkbox this thing, it automatically just assumes, oh, you want to make a vr game now. So your main camera is going to be a vr camera. And so even though there's nothing attached to this that would do that, this automatically becomes a, uh, a VR camera without any additional components just by nature of them trying to make it easy. We're going to explicitly set it though because we should do this as a best practice in any case. So go ahead and add component. Oh wait, it's not going to be in here yet. So we need to add our uh, input system. So Unity has a built-in input system. We're not using it. It is really old. They're going to be getting rid of it soon and the new one is way better. So we're going to go into the package manager here and install it. So we wait for a second. It'll show a few right off the bat, but then it actually takes them and then shows the rest. There we go. So we're going to go into the, what is it called? Input system and just hit install on this. Trust me when I say this system is way better than what's, what's built in. I'm not saying that the built-in system isn't still useful for prototyping, but this just makes it so easy to organize this stuff. Um, all right, resolving packages, that's what I want to see. More bars, yeah, bars are our friends. All right, just waiting for this to finish up. How is everyone doing? All right, so it gives us big warning. We're going to choose yes on this project. Keep in mind, if you are following this, trying to add VR to an existing project, be careful with this. This may screw up all of your input. You will have to update all of your input if you hit yes to this. So, so we're going to hit yes because we aren't using the legacy system at all. I hope I'm not talking too fast. It's been a long time since I've done this. All right, so that's going to quit and come relaunch it. So here we go. It just relaunches itself. And I guess it has to do a little bit more compiling.
all right, up to date, we're all good. I'm gonna go ahead and close the package manager. And so now we have the ability to add the component that we need to add. So what we're gonna be adding is called the tracked device, tracked pose driver, new input system. So we're gonna add this. Uh, I just clicked that, typed in what I was searching for and hit enter to add it. Uh, you can also find it in the, in the menu, just, uh, it works the same way. I just didn't know exactly where in the menu it was, so the search makes it convenient. So tracking type, position, and rotation, we want both. Update type, update, and before render. I don't know why we wanna do that in both cases, but I'm just gonna leave that on because that's the default for right now. Um, we'll explore the options later, I'm sure. Um, Position actions. So we have actions, position actions and rotation actions. So these apply to uh, inputs. And so we're going to hit the plus here next to position action and choose add binding. And then we're going to double click this binding. And then in this binding section here, we're going to click path and it's going to bring up this menu. And we're going to go into XR HMD. XR stands for extended reality. It, it's the combination of uh, virtual reality and augmented reality into one type of component. And we're going to choose center eye position. So this means that this object will now track the center eye position, which is, which represents like the eye between your two eyes, basically, is where, where your head is facing. And it's the primary position uh, and rotation you should use for tracking your head. We're going to do add binding again on the rotation action. Do the same thing, except we're going to go into XRHMD, choose... Uh, Center eye rotation. Sorry, I saw a different thing and thought I needed that. So center eye rotation. So now we're set up. We're going to hit play. Just make sure it still runs the same way it did before. It shouldn't really change. All right. Yep, it's running. I can look around. Cool. Um, but that's good. It's, it's working the way that we intended it. So I'm going to go ahead and save the scene. And let's finish this tutorial off by adding hands to our scene. So we're going to go ahead and create two spheres to represent our hands. We're going to go into the plus menu here, 3D object, sphere. And we're going to go ahead and resize this sphere. Like the default size is 0. Point, oh, default size is 1. But we're going to change it to, so this is 1 meter, and that's way too big. We want it to be like 5 centimeters. So let's just do 0.05. 0 0.05 and 0 0.05. All right. So um, now we have a really small sphere in our scene, and uh, we're going to have it track where our hands are. So we're going to go to track pose driver, and this is going to be our left hand. We're just going to, so track pose driver, same thing as before, but now in the plus menu, we go add binding, double click the binding, and instead of going into XR HMD, we go into XR controller and we choose XR controller left hand. We don't want to use device position, device rotation here, but you want to select left or right hand first. So we're going to do left hand, device position, and then we're going to add a binding in the rotation section. Same deal, path, XR controller, XR controller left hand, device rotation. All right, so now we're set up to track our left hand. Let's see if that worked. I'm just going to hit play. And it looks like it's tracking our hand. See, this is a ball. I'm moving around. This is where my hand is. Cool. So let's make the sphere. Let's duplicate the sphere. We're just going to right-click and choose Duplicate. And this one we are going to now double-click the device position and change it to the right hand version and the same with the device rotation. All right. So if we hit play one more time, I'm going to just make sure I'm, I'm going to actually view the VR views. Just make sure. Yep. We've got two, two balls. They represent where our hands are. When I bring them too close to the camera, they clip, but we'll fix that uh, next time. And uh, it does work though. That's excellent. So uh, last order of business, I'm just going to rename these so that we know that they're hands. To rename, you can just click them an extra time and then uh, give them a name. So I'm going to call it left hand. And that is our left hand, right? Yep and call this sphere one 
right hand, right hand. All right, so now I'm going to put the left hand under the main camera and the right hand under the main camera. There's nothing that says that you have to do this. I'm just doing it for organization's purposes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save the scene and hit play one more time. Just make sure everything still works as we expect it to. It does not. It does not work as we expect it to. All right. So we probably can't put it under the main camera, like I said. I lied. We will change the organization of that later when we do more work on our player controller. Right now, this is just a head, a head, a head and hands. We're not really controlling anything. We're just passing information to the system. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call that a tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And you have a wonderful night. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and close this, save, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and check this stuff in.